everyone. If you're just tuning in now and you're a uh, new viewer of Guam Photography channel, please subscribe. Those of you that have been watching the channel before, most likely recognize Sky. Hi. Sky was our model for the uh, Leica 90mm Sumicron lens. And again, Sky is visiting Guam for a short amount of time. And again, thank you so much for helping me. Of course. It was kind of last minute. <laughs> thank you, uh, that you that I contacted you um, for this shoot. But I really wanted to test this camera, which everyone that's viewing this video should know that this camera is a beast. And with this lens, this is considered a kit lens. It's a all weather resistant 55 millimeter lens, but I just want to see how it performs for um, portraits. And Sky, we were talking earlier and uh, you said now you have a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. I just started it up. Um, if you type in Sky Baker, you'll see my face. That's me. So far, there's only three Sky Bakers on YouTube, so I'm one of nice. them. Nice. <laughs> and of course, we'll put your other social media yes. um, accounts below here. The Instagram still have Snapchat? Yes. I know a lot of users have kind of moved over from Snapchat to yeah. ID Story. But I, have, I have it all, just, just in case. Okay. Yeah. And so the same Sky Baker, Sky Baker but the A is a V. A v? Yep. Okay. So we've been shooting for about 10 to 15 minutes. So far, how do you like the images from this medium format camera? I like them. They look really nice and clean. The lighting's mm. nice. And I feel like you know what you're doing. So they'll turn out great either way. Cool. <laughs> I try to pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you're yeah. a great pretender then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we'll, we'll keep on shooting. Uh, we still have a lot of um, light left. It may look kind of dark uh, in the video, but it's been super cloudy today. So the whole sky is um, overcast right now with the clouds. But actually, I think that's the best light yeah. because the light is very soft. Yeah. And it actually brings out your, your makeup even more. So the highlight, though. you can see the highlight <laughs> and the glow like, really well. Yes. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. Bye. Some physical features about this Pentax 55mm 2.8 lens is it has very good build quality. It feels great in the hands. This is actually the kit lens for the 645D and 645Z. So this lens is, is a little bit more expensive than the film uh, Pentax lenses because it's actually made for the digital medium format cameras. It is SDM, which stands for Super Sonic Direct Drive Motor. It actually has, I'm going to read from my notes here, Pentax SP coating. It is a special coating which applies a fluorine compound to the lens surface through a vapor disposition process. So this actually repels dust, water, and grease. I do have a lens filter in the front for extra protection, but if you don't have that, any dust that's thrown at it, grease, you can actually just take a, a cloth and just wipe it off and, and we'll, it won't leave anything behind. I've seen some videos of this on YouTube where people actually test it out, but pretty good lens. One, two, and three. Other features of this lens it has a quick shift focus system. So if I take a picture of Sky using autofocus, I can actually grab the focus ring and it's in manual mode right away. So I can also use manual focus to take the shot. This lens has a minimum focusing distance of 1.64 feet, has a 67 millimeter filter thread, and it weighs only 14.67 ounces. So good lightweight lens, small filter thread. You can actually take this um, with you almost anywhere instead of carrying a, a longer telephoto lens. So this is working out as an um, all-purpose lens so 55 millimeters on this camera is actually equivalent to about 43 44 millimeters on full frame okay one more shot very nice
Okay, a little closer. That's good, you're putting your head in the 23. Other internal features is this lens has seven sills for good weather sealing. It has nine elements in seven groups. It also has nine rounded diaphragm blades for a very smooth bouquet. And the autofocus motor is super quiet. Let me bring it up to the mic. You can't even hear it at all. So this modern lens is uh, way quieter than the screw-driven um, Pentax film lenses for the system. One, two, and three. Look away again, please. One, two, and three. Oh. Some pauses about the lens. Like I said earlier, on a full frame system, it is about a 43.5 millimeters. That is actually like kind of close to our human eye, what a human eye can see on the, the width. 35 millimeter, maybe too wide, but about 44, 45 millimeters, kind of a natural view of things. Uh, so most of the pictures here that I'm getting from the Pentax looks very natural and realistic. Some cons of the lens, I notice even though it has a supersonic um, drive motor SDM, it's sometimes slow to focus compared to the uh, screw driven lenses. I tried the 75 millimeter on the last YouTube video with this camera. Focus is very accurate and very fast. It is noisy. Uh, this lens, the 55 millimeter, it is very quiet, but sometimes a little bit slow to focus. But in low light, I don't notice any focus um, hunting at all. It locks on in very low light. I think I injured my back at PIC when I went down that long water slide. It was going too fast. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna make One, two, and three. Very nice, not so high this time. One, two, and three. Let me try to see if I can get that in the background. Okay, let me get a little closer. Kind of looks like your home Hawaii here. We've been shooting for about two hours now, and I know we have gotten a lot of good shots. Second outfit, and from this outfit, we tried to contrast it with the greens mm -hmm. and also the uh, different tones um, of the rocks. As you can see behind us, the clouds have cleared and the sun is hitting the rocks and some of the coastline very well. And we got some shots of, of that, that you should have seen them in the video already. So Sky, overall, what did you think about this photo shoot? I had a lot of fun, like I always do with James. And um, I'm really excited to see the outcome of these pictures because looking at it here, it's really clear and crisp. Mm -hmm. I like that. So hopefully, I know they will turn out great. So can't wait to see them. <laughs> I was uh, explaining to Sky earlier because uh, you mentioned that it kind of looks like it should be on a magazine. Yeah because of the way it just uh, fills by looking at it. Yeah. So 51 megapixels uh, for this camera. When we zoomed in, this lens is very sharp, wide open. We can count every eyelash. And when we zoomed out, because I was shooting it wide open at 2.8, on a full frame equivalent, that's about a 2.2. So we're still able to blur the background slightly. So the subject, which is Sky the Model, is in focus. 
and it has a very nice transition from in focus to out of focus and the blurred background. It kind of makes it feel three dimensional, um, like a real life photo mm -hmm. that you're looking at. So I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of photographers that get paid thousands of dollars get a digital medium format camera. Well, I had a lot of fun, so you guys should be looking forward to seeing all the pictures, just as yes. I am. And I uh, can't wait to do another one of these with James when I come back. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. So I can't wait to go home and check out the photos. I know, I'm excited. I want to look them up. I am too. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, bye. bye. All right, we are home now. And as you can see, I have four raw Pentax 645Z files. If you're wondering how did I get the Pentax raw files into Capture One, what I did is I changed the EXIF data. And if you want to know how to do that, you can look at the previous Pentax 645Z video I did last year. I changed it to read phase one IQ250, which essentially is the same 51 megapixel Sony sensor as found in the uh, Fujifilm GFX, the Hasselblad X1D, and as well as a Pentax 645Z. So the color profile you see here is using phase one's IQ250 color profile. These photos are raw and unedited. I just wanted to show you um, the differences between the picture quality of each aperture. So first is 2.8, second photo is 3.2, f4, and 5.6. As you can see, 2.8, it is super sharp. You can see every eyelash on Sky's eye. 3.2, slightly off focus it looks like, but still very sharp. F4 should be getting sharper. Again, I think uh, there's some slight movement here, either by me or Sky. Lastly, 5.6, there you go. Very sharp as uh, 2.8. So if you look at the background, 2.8 is very smooth, 3.2 is still good. By F4, you kind of lose the background to subject separation, as you see with the 2.8. At 5.6, you can see more of the uh, background. But a 2.8 is equivalent to about a F2.2 lens field of view on a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. This sensor is 1.7 times larger. So the 2.8 will kind of look like a 2.2 uh, on the photo. It gets kind of complicated converting um, from digital medium format uh, there's a reverse crop factor into um, the focal length equivalent but like i said earlier in the video 55 is about a 43 or 44 millimeter so i was actually able to get white shots of sky and also these portrait shots uh, right here one of my favorite photos from this shoot uh, will be this one this is of course edited but shot wide open at 2.8 this is super sharp very sharp lens so if you're in the market for a uh, Pentax 645Z, the prices have gone down. Used, you can get it for about $4,500. You should really get this uh, so-called kit lens. This is, this shouldn't even be called a kit lens. This lens is super sharp, has a natural view of the human eye around 44, 43 millimeters. You can get away with wide shots, close-up shots, and you can still have some subject to background separation. Thank you for watching, and of course, please subscribe.